Hello. Hello, all you spoil, spoil, <laughs> spoil, I was almost saying spoiled, um, soul inspired beings out there. It's Gina here. It's been a while since I've connected directly with the group. Thought I'd come on today. It's this beautiful, warm evening, Monday. I keep saying the 25th, but it's the 24th. And uh, I thought I'd come on and say hello as I'm getting ready for some other things. I hope some of you out there feel called to join me on Sunday at 5 o'clock to um, join a free workshop. It is donation based. If you'd like to donate, feel free to do so um, on Zoom. I'll leave the link again later. Um, it's on the Akashic Record. It's an introduction to the Akashic Record, but it's uh, like self-empowerment and healing through your soul to the access of your Akashic record. This is about you becoming sovereign, your own spiritual guide. And it doesn't mean that you don't connect with angels or other guides or things of that nature, but it's part of your spiritual foundation is to learn how to access these things on your own with no longer needing necessarily a third party in the same way. Um, it doesn't mean you don't seek guidance outside of yourself um, per se as a it'll just change it'll it'll be more of like a common unity as you come together with others for clarity on what you're experiencing versus tell me tell me what i need to know tell me what i need to see right um, because you my loves are expanding your heart's opening up your um, chakras your higher chakras outside of the body are coming more and more online as your heart chakra is becoming more and more active your third eye is getting upgraded and it's not just isolated to just the the brow the third eye that's internal okay a lot of people mistake that um, and perhaps it's just was a stage of learning when we look at the chakra system as linear right it, we see it as a linear thing of um, the root the primary seven the root the sacral the solar plexus the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown, right? We've learned it as a linear component, but really the light body system is quite um, multidimensional and vast. It's not just a, a linear dot to dot to dot. It works together. It's like, a, it's a technical machine. It's a, it's a, it's technology. Okay. Your body is technology. And how do you learn it? How do you work with it? How do you recognize it through energy, through through the vehicle of the body? Because it's in and outside of you. It's in and through the body as you connect to your soul, your spirit, your heart, and recognizing how to really use your sensory body. That's beyond your five senses. Okay, meta, beyond. When we work with Archangel Metatron, meta, we're going beyond our senses okay we're going deeper into our the subtle energies of your auric field and beyond that and that knowing and the connection to the earth plane the connection to um the universal source the heart i like to describe it heart of the earth the heart of your being the heart of the universe and you're connecting these things together and um then they've always been connected, right? You're just being more conscious in it and aware and purposeful in how you operate your machinery, okay? Your technology, your energy, how do you manage it? And it includes the gut, okay? And what we bring into there is our actual nervous system because our nervous system of the physical body is our pathways of information, right? Neuro is transmitter, transmitter, transports, okay? It's information and we're learning, I say we, but you are learning um, and I are how to really decode that. How do we recognize the information and operate with it in a totally different way than we're used to where our emotions are information versus a place that we react from. It's just recognizing, oh, that's something that I feel, I feel the energy I feel this this energy has a lot of anger to it, a lot of heat, a lot of fire, right? A lot of fire. And that's not a bad thing. What you do with it matters, right? If you're having a lot of anger and fire come up, it's it's telling you information that there's something in you that needs to be put, brought back into balance and reconciled, right? So um, 
and it's just another emotion it's just energy okay it's energy but what's one thing when we get consumed by our emotions and then we run we allow the emotions to run us versus our heart and higher self to run us um, that's when we create more chaos in our life um, okay so um, and I'm sure all of us can think of a time in our life where we've done that and or whether it's recent or, or in our past. Um, but it all lives within you, okay, until you reconcile it and be in the moment of now. Alexa, turn off. Um, sorry, there's weird music starting. Um, in the moment of now. So I pulled a couple cards off, off camera just before starting because I'm like, gosh, I really want to connect to the angels right now. And as I came home from my work day, I listened to that song, Hallelujah, about four times, maybe more, by different artists, um, Jeff Buckley, Katie Lang, and uh, Rufus Wainwright, and I think they all, three of them, do a beautiful and unique job with the song. Um, but what I love about it is just it gets me into a different place. I feel like I'm in church, right? And and when you define the word hallelujah, and forgive me if I pronounce it incorrectly, um, it's, it's basically praising God, praising the Lord. And the, the way I think about that now, it's like it's praising that light within me and praising that light within all of us and within you and within, within life within life that we're all connected to and so the card I pulled that like out was this beautiful card I am not familiar with this angel until today Archangel Gersisa Gersisa forgive me if I mispronounce that if either of any of you know how to pronounce that more properly please let me know um, but take in that image it's beautiful and there we see Stonehenge right and if I'm looking at this image of her the power of it and it reminds me of connecting with our divine feminine energy as well that's balancing and coming into harmony with our ma masculine but look at the power in that look at that power that light that golden light that runs through you because you are not different you're not different from this angel and the energy she represents because it's a realm right so when you're holding yourself at a certain level of frequency and vibration you can begin to access and work more directly with the angelic realm to support you along your way support you in your your consciousness raising your soul growing and expanding in this human body and to bring light in to your system okay because your body is sacred it's des it's designed to um, receive energy and give energy and transport energy give and receive it's a constant flow but as you know I talk about the pillar of light and look at this pillar like her body is like a pillar of light okay your body is a pillar of light and it becomes so important again look what do I talk about foundational work spiritual foundation and we, again we had um, Archangel Sandalphon right uh, last week tune into your divine potential and to bring harmony to the world right and how do you bring harmony to the world is by bringing harmony to yourself and so part of this um, card for me as I'm reading it like intuitively and touching base with it's just magnificent she's totally in her pillar of light and then it radiates out from the center so if you look at it a little more closely the pillar goes all the way through and then you have these rays of light bursting from the center and I like to think of our center as the heart right as because the light body extends out beyond our physical body so for instance if we're looking at the heart as the center where all those energies meet then you're you're above the ground right you're above the earth you're between earth and heaven because because you are both you're both the earth and the heavens meeting in physical form 
manifesting in physical form and you're bringing in the consciousness of the earth and the consciousness of the heavens through you through your body and look at how those rays radiate out into the earth it's like going into the ley lines all that energy coming out through her hands in through that energetic center that portal of Stonehenge and there's many portals on this planet golden light coming through and there's even the elements here like look at this almost cloud formations coming through her like right and the celestial piece and the wings the wings look like they have stars in them right and so that energy how might you bring your energy to help support raise the planet and each other right and even this card says create a solid spiritual foundation be in service to the planet and what does that mean to you right I know what that means for me and the important piece is what does being in service to the planet mean to you right because it doesn't mean you have to be some big like maybe start a nonprofit or having healing center it doesn't mean you have to do that not everyone is meant to create those things right it could be just as much as you doing your inner healing and creating a new reality and a way of living that fosters harmony okay that fosters harmony in your world which ripples out right so for instance maybe you have kids and you're teaching them a different way of living and to be in community to to touch base with their feelings and how to express it what does it mean to be in an energy body what does that mean how to how, you right maybe kids can teach you a thing or two about that because they're very in tune right or maybe you work with animals and that's your service work maybe you care for animals maybe you care for seniors or maybe you just pray and you put that energy not just in through you but you put that energy into the world right there are times when I pick a place and I just send prayers and energy and the violent flame to that area to bring calm and peace and healing to that place that is bringing service to the planet how are you using your energy that serves the planet for the greater good and that doesn't mean depleting your energy because she's in her pillar of light she's in her direct connection with source energy so how do you bring source energy into the planet for the service of the planet so it can be multi it's multi-dimensional not that it can be it this process is multi-dimensional so by you bringing light your the light that you have access to in through your body from the and staying anchored into the, the light of the earth and the light of the heavens into your heart and spreading that out and living life from the soul from your heart connection from your I am presence as you're having a human experience of the physical body you will begin to walk this world differently and recognize okay wow what I do think say do act upon matters because it has a ripple effect into the entire planet and universe so think about those things without getting too overwhelmed because that can be an overwhelming thought for those of you that aren't that far along excuse me but how might you connect to your yourself right and bring harmony to yourself that brings service to the world by you being in service um, in your focus in your lane basically and be in service to to yourself but I don't mean that from a selfish way I mean like if I'm working on myself and choosing the life that I want to create and choose that now right so maybe I want to like for instance I'm starting to grow more vegetables because I want to connect more with the earth and grow food and have something in my life that's more regenerative regenerative regener that regenerates self-sustaining 
right? So, right, so I can grow something from a seed to the plant to the fruit and do it all over again. And then I could break it down and put it into mulch and back into the soil and the cycle continues. That's becoming more and more important to me. And to me, that also is in service to the world because now I'm in more connection and in the cycle of the earth itself or like the plane of earth, like the, um, the actual cycles of the planet and season and also of my body, right? Where, okay, now I'm not as wasteful. I'm using everything because it all has purpose and it becomes this regeneration of energy and transformation of energy that has a purpose in its in the psych in the aspect of the cycle that it's in you are also that this is a cycle but it's more it becomes more of that spiral going up that pillar of light that keeps you protected from any energy that does not of source energy and, and re-alchemizes your discordant energy. So some of you may be feeling old stuff coming up to the surface, old thoughts, old relationships, old patterns that you thought you were complete with. That may be coming up to the surface again because we've been hit with so much more light codes coming in to the planet. And so emotions may be running higher for you it could show up as anger it could show up as depression perhaps some of you like me got thrown into a like a basically a water cleanse um, hydration becomes really important during these times of alchemy and bringing light in okay because it requires a lot of energy but it also requires your body to be pure Right, so when we're eating denser foods, heavier foods like meat, red meat, fatty foods, things that don't support our body, um, integrate light so much, um, your body may have naturally thrown you into a fast of some kind. So for me, I was just drawn to um, melons, water, hydration, mint, these were very cooling and flushing out my system because it also was helping me on a cellular level regenerate fresh cells. Okay, so that was for my body. You will know what's right for your body. And I wasn't depleting myself of anything. I just, my body just naturally went into that phase and it for about a week. And then now I'm back to eating regular solid foods um, but still being mindful and sticking with the hydration. Hydration became very important as we're working, doing our light work. Be, as you are doing your light work, whatever that means for you, hydrate, 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 because you are evolving internally. You're getting more light accessed into your body as your vibration is raising, your consciousness is expanding, your third eye is expanding, and your ability to... Um, even become more telepathic is happening for many of us. I've been talking about that more on Instagram because your soul star is becoming more activated. And there's that place of also calling in forgiveness, right? With, especially with the soul star. So you can keep your pillar, your light body clear and clean and no longer be limited by the past, even of your soul history. That anyone that's holding information, that uh, resentment towards you in your life, your soul life, okay? I'm not just talking about this human life this time. Um, that you can release that and bring forgiveness to you and you, you can go inward and connect with your soul history and ask that, just put love out there and ask for any, any being holding their past experiences with you in other lifetimes, be present now and released. Ask them to release you. In, and you'll know the right way to do that for yourself and you'll know how many times you need to go into stillness to access that um, and ask for guidance in there bring in the angels to assist you all right we also have Archangel Jophiel that came in to assist and in, in this process today which I found is really beautiful he has so much gold and it's his message to you and me today is to act with wisdom use information for the highest good okay use information for the highest good and look how pure and gold and he's got that beautiful lotus flower that reminds me of a sunflower but also this beautiful gold robe and wings and then the wings also have this beautiful um, white and blue 
it's such like this purity that's coming through and also the green in the background of represents can represent many things but also this hopeful nature and healing and um, lime can be very uh, hope very um, healing too so some of you may be experiencing grief of some kind lime is very helpful um, in processing grief through the body and um, because as you change and shed aspects of yourself there can be a grieving process there can be you know the what is it the five stages of grief so you can go through anger depression um, what is it acceptance um, let me see really quick yeah denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance your soul growth is no different many of us or you or myself uh, others in their awakening can go through the five stages of grief in at any moment in their awakening process um right you you can deny things about yourself right and it's just like no it's time to look at things for yourself to go oh wait that's not even real right that's not even how i want to be that's not the really truly what i'm feeling or wanting to even express right there can be a depression as you let go of aspects of yourself that occur but just know this is a natural organic process and you are not defined by the the anger and and there's no bargaining anymore right so some of you may still be bargain like oh okay i'll do this for you god but if i get this right there's no bargaining when you're working with your divine will and you're connected with your I am presence and you're in the act of surrender because it's a very active place to be you're walking it with faith and trust faith and trust it's not about bargaining you can't bargain your way to awakening it's a process um, right it's not if this then that and it's like no it's it's it operates in a totally different way and you will realize that as you go along your journey going oh yeah i can't bargain i can't do those things because it's when you're doing that it's not in alignment with source it's not in alignment with the flow of abundance consciousness it, it's it there's a lack of trust happening when you're bargaining there's a hook into it right and we're moving away from anything that's codependent um, because you are learning to be a sovereign being and how to trust yourself so why would you bargain with yourself right there's so many times you're bar really it's what you're doing is bargaining with yourself because you are light of god that's within you okay so all of us can bargain with ourselves like oh you know what I'll get this when I lose 10 more pounds I'll do that when I make 50,000 more dollars I'll do this when 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 so when is always putting it out in the future and then that never happens right because you're always putting it off and bargaining and oh I didn't work out today but maybe tomorrow like all those small little bargaining things like oh it's okay to eat this because I did that and like accepting certain stuff and I'm not saying don't enjoy life but there's bargaining that we do among ourselves and there's bargaining that we do with other people so and really the if I'm looking at these five stages of life where's the wisdom in the highest good right if I'm bargaining really where's the wisdom in that for myself if I'm bargaining with myself because ultimately you're bargaining with yourself is it for your highest good is it coming from a place of wisdom meaning your I am presence where you look down at the whole totality of a situation right and be mindful of that lower ego coming in and trying to bargain with you because oftentimes that's what it is it's some lower aspect of you um, that wants to generate fear of some kind or or stand in the way for lack of a better term of you moving forward into your soul embodiment into embodying your higher qualities your christ consciousness energies and way of being once the more you enter it because that's where we're going people we are integrating into our five-dimensional crystalline body our carbon-based body is very quickly dissolving and moving away so um, your body is going through an alchemical process right now so for those of you recognizing gosh I can't eat meat right now that's okay just go to what your body's um, guiding you toward 
for instance, I was eating a lot more watermelons, berries, particularly watermelon, straw, strawberries, cantaloupes, honeydew, and mint. That was like all I was eating for like a week. And those probiotic drinks, for whatever reason, just my gut needed those things. And um, then I could eat mushrooms, you know, sauteed mushrooms. And it just was a very interesting shifts in my diet. And um, so pay attention to that and follow those nudgings, those inner nudgings. Your body, I don't know, whatever you feels right for you. You know, some people might see an Ayurvedic um, naturopath, right? And that's all about the gut and, um, and connection with source and life, right? Because Ayurvedic means uh, it's life, the source of life. Um, pay attention to that because all of those things, do, to bring in your highest good and to do it with wisdom, all those things support you bringing light into the earth and to be in service to the earth. By you paying attention and being in service to your vehicle, your body, that helps you be more in service of, of the light that's within you to the light that's within the earth to assist in raising its consciousness. But I'm gonna um, bring the book out because the book might have some nudgings for you um, ver versus just what comes to me in the channeling of information. And, uh, and you just take what sits well with you, right? You don't have to believe or everything I say by any means because you're sovereign you make your own divine tree to be aware of where you are at within yourself and your own patterns and belief systems and um, the things that need to change right they don't serve you anymore for the highest good of you or, or mankind or the planet um, and that may even be why I'm starting to grow my own food because um, what is continuing to buy a certain way or live a certain way, how is that really perpet um, supporting the planet, right? If I can be a little more self-sustaining and grow and be in more of a circuit where it's feeding itself and it's more sustained, then I'm no longer being, um, one, I'm becoming more sovereign and self-sustaining right then I no longer am solely dependent on just going to the grocery store for food right there's something really powerful in that right because then I get to manage my food and what I bring into my body versus like I was having a conversation with a, a brother of mine one of many and um, we were talking about watermelons and he's like because my watermelons have seeds in it and his watermelon is like god i don't remember the last time i had a watermelon with seeds in it and i'm all tony do you ever realize how odd that might be because we were talking about somehow we started talking about organic food now i'm not an expert on the whole organic process but i told him i'm all for anything to be truly organic i'm all our water has to be pure our air has to be pure the soil has to be pure and there's no separation from from the contaminants that are in the air and in our water, okay? We're not separate from that. We can try to eat as clean as possible and the soil be as clean as possible. And I'm not saying, you know, there's that people don't do a good job about that. But I'm just saying how organic is it really if I'm buying something from the store that has the label organic but the, the, the farm next door, to, next door to it, the same soil, isn't. Or it's an, maybe it's a farm that's converting. It's already in the soil. That means it's in your roots. It's in the plant already, right? I have the same thing that it has happens at one of the local parks because they spray a version of some different type of version of ground up or whatever, Roundup, but it's a weed killer and people leave the park for like a week and they come back and then they some person has a more of a passion about this because it's more of a mineral field but um it's already in the roots it's in the roots right it's in the weeds so if our dogs are eating the weeds it's already there it doesn't matter if the it's been rinsed off the top anymore because it's in the soil right and it takes a while for the earth to regenerate and purify itself. So how might I, in my own experience, by growing my own food and being more self-sustaining, maybe minimize my own contribution to waste 
um, to maybe even ingesting pesticides un unknowingly, right? So I think you get the picture. Do it. Do whatever you need to do in your life. It doesn't make it. Make it. Um, do the choices that are successful for you, right? Again, it doesn't have to be hard. Just small choices can have a big impact. Um, so, okay, back to the book here. Um, but I think you get what I'm saying. Okay, here it is. So, this is for Archangel Gersis. Ger, forgive me, my language does not want to come out today. Create a solid spiritual foundation. Be in service to the planet. So, Archangel Gersis, us influence influence spreads throughout the universe. Her gray and white colors radiate like spoke round like spokes around her. Her etheric retreat is in a hollow earth, and she works with the being, with beings there of Lumerian wisdom, steady and active, that hold Lumerian wisdom. So those of you that connect with Lumerian energy in hollow earth, the center of the earth, it's really a powerful place to go meditate to and call in that Lumerian energy. Some of you may have a past history with Lumeria. I know I have connection there. That's one of the reasons why I love to travel to certain places um, like Mount Shasta. Um, so, but you can just go in there in meditation and ask to connect to the Lumerian energy. So wherever she is in the universe, she connects to the ley lines, okay? Remember I said the ley lines in this? And see all those are ley lines? That's how you can you can also contribute light through the ley lines, okay? Um, and she sends her white light along them. This helps keep the whole planet stable and in touch with the latest cosmic news. That's nice, with cosmic news. Archangel Gersisa is also working with a team of archangels to build an energy grid to connect all the stars, planets, and galaxies for the new golden age. And you notice, remember I said she has all the stars in her wings, okay? And it's all this golden light coming in. So this new golden age, she clears the energy around your earth star chakra. That's three and a half feet below outside of your body that you can also call on Archangel Sandalphon. He assists with activating your earth star chakra. When your earth star chakra gets activated, it's a energetic signal that you are on your ascension path. Okay, your path of light. And so your soul begins to waken up. And so with that comes a heart opening. So it's, doesn't, it makes perfect sense to me while you would be connecting more to your Lumerian, your Lumerian energy um, that lives within you um, and the center of the earth, okay? Um, because you're having a higher frequency and ability to hold light and love, that frequency and energy vibration of love in your body and being. She clears the energy around the earth star chakra so the source light can pass through it to the center of the earth, okay? Assisting you to create a solid spiritual foundation for ascension. Yeah, because this is really important to have that solid foundation because your higher chakras are going to go up and it's it becomes, as your earth star chakra opens and other chakras below that, it's, it sends that natural signal that you're ready to have your higher chakras, your etheric chakras open up, okay? So you have to be anchored into the earth to be able to ground that in and so you can hold that. So you can be that pillar. So you can be that pillar of light, totally grounded in your personal power, unaffected in your directing energy. Your directing energy from a place of wisdom, from a place of wisdom and higher consciousness for the highest good, okay? Um, guidance here, receiving this card suggests that you're ready to move forward on your ascension path. It reminds you to strengthen your earth star chakra by walking spiritual, by walking, so walk out in nature, be barefoot on the, on the earth, let nature come up, be part of the magnet, okay? Um, 
strengthen your start okay spiritual reading meditation chanting or your own particular spiritual discipline okay so be creative with your spiritual practice that is something i will say over and over again that is very vital for you to create a daily spiritual practice daily even if it's 10 minutes okay ask archangel garicia or gersissa to help you sink roots deep into hollow earth so that you can access wisdom and knowledge. This is also the card of universal service. Archangel Gorsisa is calling you to assist the planet by sending your light down the ley lines or around the new ninth dimensional cosmic grid. To do this, visualize yourself as a column of light. Okay, that's your pillar of light then draw cosmic energy down through yourself into hollow earth okay down through your light column into hollow earth see it spreading through earth's fifth dimensional ley line grid and then out through stonehenge to light up the cosmic grid okay so that mu that's probably the earth star chakra is stonehenge in that area that's probably why they're referring to would be my intuitive and and an educational guess an educated guess so let me just look that up for some of you right now where is the earth chakra located for the planet um, is the location in the world because the earth also has its own chakra system um, I know the root is Shasta. Yeah, Stonehen energy, the center of the Earth's heart chakra. Okay, ah, yeah, there we go. So heart, um, it's the heart chakra of Mother Earth. So that's why you're connecting through Stonehenge. Let me um, see if there's a little more information there for us here. And I just wanna make sure I stay on the video. Uh, the beginning, May 29th. I'm just going to scan through this real quick. Follow Egypt. Okay, the trip was okay. Because it's can well, remember the ley lines connect throughout the planet. So when we're looking at Stonehenge, we're also maybe looking at Glastonbury connections to Egypt energy. Because I know a lot of things have opened up energetically through Egypt as well. Um, okay, let's see. The heart and healing vitality of Stonehenge. And this is coming from a website. Chile, chilev.com so c-h-i-l-a-v-i-e.com slash earths um, dash heart dash chakra forward slash okay i can leave the link there but you can also google some yourself and um if something else resonates with you more circle formation i'm just reading through this really quick Actually, I don't. Okay, hold on. I'm going to find a different reference because this one seems to just be more about her visits to Stonehenge. And I want something that's a little more tangible for you. Um, here we go. Root, sacral, solar plexus, heart chakra, Glastonbury. Yeah, it's connected there back to Egypt, third eye, crown. Okay, we're going to read a little bit about Glastonbury. Okay. Um, Stonehenge as well as surrounding area. Yeah, Stonehenge as well as the surrounding areas, which include Glastonbury, Summer Rest, Shaftesbury, Dorts, help, help form the heart chakra. So let's see, one, two, three. So right it has four regions that help form the heart chakra which makes sense look how it relates also to our physical heart four chambers of the heart okay um 
specifically Stonehenge is considered to be the highest point of energy in the area. The Holy Grail can be found in Glastonbury and the Sacred Spear of Purpose can be found in Shaftesbury. When the two energies are united, the Rainbow Serpent Ley Artery, it's a ley line, it's a big ley line that runs through the planet, okay? And um, it's that we have serpent lines and they one goes like this and then the other does the opposite. Okay, it's that the masculine and feminine feminine energy serpent lines run through the planet. You can look those up and get kind of a, a picture of them on your own. And they're called serpent lines, serpent ley lines. And this particular one is the rainbow serpent ley line. It's also referred as to the artery. Okay, makes sense, right? We physically have arteries that pulsate through our body, right? It runs energy through our body, blood, water. Okay, so at the rainbow serpent lay artery is able to deliver the immortalizing frequencies of the Holy Grail worldwide. So and that's an important piece to recognize the Holy Grail is energy. Let go of this concept that it's an actual item or artifact that someone's trying to search for as we've seen depicted through fables, through folklore, um, whether it has actual, an actual item of some sort, like a uh, chalice, um, recognize you are that chalice. You are the Holy Grail within you. And you can connect to any of these energies within the ley lines, but you must do it from wisdom and the highest good and purity and that golden light coming in, okay? So that Holy Grail can be found in Glastonbury in the Sacred Spear of Purpose, okay? Be with purpose because you you are all these energetic qualities so now more than ever is to be with purpose in everything that you do okay so and that okay when the two energies are united the rainbow serpent artery is able to deliver I'm rereading this immortalizing frequencies of the Holy Grail worldwide when the heart chakra is balanced you are able to love yourself and others while also showing compassion for those around you the female dragon ley line also connects to Uluru to Stonehenge Uluru is in Australia it's another powerful um, it's another chakra center to the planet, very powerful energy center um, there. And for some reason, I'm not able to... Interesting. It's not letting me scroll back up to Uluru. So pay attention to those things. Um, on your own, you can look up Uluru and find out the energy there, what that is there for you. Um, but recognizing you too are balancing your heart chakra. The masculine and feminine energies that run through you, like the caduceus, your um, kundalini energy is being magnified as your heart opens up in your higher chakras. You're like a magnet drawing that light up through your energetic body and it's going through all your energy centers balanced in harmonious way so you are coming back into a harmonics with your masculine and feminine energy bring harmony to the world means bringing harmony to yourself bringing light to the world is harmonizing your masculine and feminine qualities bringing in your divine feminine through mary magdalene connect with her energy um, she will assist you in bringing forth the harmony and balance of your divine feminine energy and we'll spray some of that into the field and you, as you feel fit you receive whatever energy that you would like okay so we're talking about these things um, so it's time for you to begin right people talk about oh I have compassion fatigue you should never I wouldn't be mindful of my own words when you are in harmonics you'd no longer become depleted as you're learning how to hold these embody these qualities of compassion forgiveness love you will no longer be in those compassion like fatigue you'll no longer be tired in the same way you'll recognize these energies running through you in a totally different way than perhaps before right because you're building your spiritual foundation and your energetic body to be able to hold these things within yourself and um, good I finally got this to unfreeze so 
you'll be able to hold it within yourself with more ease, more grace, because you're stepping further into your self mastery. The solar plexus is Uluru the, of the earth. Okay, the solar plexus chakra is Uluru at Kata Tuhuta. Forgive me on my pronunciation if it's incorrect in Australia. So we can see the outer layer that's bulging out through the surface of the earth. And it is depicted also the same underneath. So into the ground, it goes just as far beneath the ground as it does above. Um, and last year, this area got a huge cleansing with rainfall and water and where the waterfalls were coming off of Uluru and all it brought fresh life to this energetic center. Think about your own solar plexus, your power center. How are you purifying that so you're in your pillar of light and in your personal power of yourself versus trying to exert power over situations or people? right you're no longer you're moving out of fear and coming into trust and faith in who you truly are and in your essence so you're no longer being pulled outside of yourself when experiencing or witnessing polarities in life okay so that means someone else could be in their own chaos and you'll be right here unaffected rel relatively unaffected because you're mastering your own energy okay so think about how you might connect to the sh chakra centers of the planet um, again with wisdom for the highest good bringing in the golden light bringing doing your light work how are you being in service to the planet and that could be as simple as praying and sending light to regions or into the ley lines so some of you may realize oh wow you're an earth keeper that's one of the terms people use for people that take care of the earth work with the the grid system and it's not about you manipulating the system only as it is to i'm going to support the planet to bring golden light into it the planet herself on a conscious level she'll know exactly what to do with that energy but it's very important for you to stay pure in your heart and in the light that is coming in through you as a conduit of light as a light worker okay as a being of light and all of us are beings of light but you're going to know what your work is as you become more and more connected to your heart and the heart of the universe your i am presence embodiment and the heart of the earth okay so i'll read a little bit about uluru it is still considered to be a sacred to aboriginals in the area today both of these are areas meaning uluru and kata tohuta um, in northern Australia. Both of these areas are believed to represent the solar plexus, which is the lifeline supplying energy to all living things. When balanced, the solar plexus gives you a feeling of personal power, a sense of wisdom, because think about your gut. It's, it's connected. You, it's totally connected to, it's an informational center. Think about how it relates to your own body, okay? When you're in your personal power, in your gut, in your heart, and your higher self, all those acting in alignment, you're in your pillar. There's nothing that's going to, you're in the truth of what is versus just a, maybe the truth of an experience, right? Um, you're in the, the totality of everything. You're in the I am presence, seeing the highest good of all, life. So, and you'll be able to make decisions with more authority, more trust in who you are and it won't matter if it's received from others or not. If this center also, it maintains the vitality of the earth and all living species, right? So think about when your gut is off, you lose vitality in your own body, right? So eating well is really important right now as you are evolving in your light body and your physical body is literally transforming at a rate that we've never seen before. This is where it makes sense why some people, hi Gus, that's my dog, hi Gussie. This makes sense why many people are having challenges with their thyroid, higher heart chakra, okay? Thyroid, adrenals, um, endocrine system, right? So do what you need to do to bring the, your endocrine system into balance. And that part of that is resting the body too. And 
being in your spiritual practices to through the breath, through prayer, connecting with water, praying over your food, hydration, okay? The reason why I say pray over your food, even pray with your body, because your water. Dr. Emoto did a lot of studies about water and strengthening and um, basically by prayer and saying affirmations in the positive, it brings the cellular molecular structure back into a harmonic state, a higher vibrational state. So you have that power when you pray over water. You pray over your body because most of your body is water. Um, you have the power to restructure your body on a molecular level. This is where I encourage you to bring in the violent flame prayers and mantras and decrees. When you use the violent flame, you can make up your own as well. Um, you're igniting the Merkabahs, those energetic centers, the, um, I forget the term in Hindu, I think. The, I think it's Oja, it's around the, the plasma around and in the cells. Um, you're, you're oscillating those and beginning to vibrate those and so they can come back into a harmonic state. Okay, you have the power to do that. So again, to do it with purpose and wisdom, with purpose and wisdom and how you are in service to the planet. You are part of the planet. You are Earth. So by you learning how to use these foundational tools, because Violet Flame, working with the rainbow light, that's a, that's a tool. In my opinion, in my experience of awakening and soul awakening and beings of light, every single being of light knows how to use the energy and, the, and different frequencies and vibration of color because we are aspects of all of that. And when we're in our purest state, we come into this blue, it's, this, it's depicted as white with blue, right? So your whole column of light is white with a blue hue around it. Think about how pure, what is it? Pure is the driven snow. When you're talking about your own purity, when you look at snow, when it's so pure, it has that hint of blue. That's the kind of we're talking about, but imagine it being more iridescent, more, crystalline and sparkly right like when the sun hits it yet it glows it glitters okay and that's the best like example i could give you of what our light body becomes and what those of you that perhaps can see color and auras and perhaps you can speak more to that experience if you see it that way for me sometimes i just see it in my mind's eye i don't necessarily Every now and then I'll get shown something visually through my eyes, um, but not not all the time. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Let me see. I'm going to ask Archangel Metatron if there's anything else. Anything else, Archangel Metatron? So pull from his deck. Pull from the Metatron deck. No, which deck? Oh, the light activation deck. Okay, we're going to pull one card from the Light Activation deck by, um, it's an oracle deck by, oh, Jennifer, oh, by Kyle Gray, and the artwork is done by Jennifer Hawk, Hawkyard, Hawkyard, and I love his decks. He does really lovely work, Kyle Gray. I think I have two of his decks now. There's a third one that I'd like to acquire, but we'll see. Um, just one card, please, Archangel Metatron. All right. So the, oh, Venusian Galactic Council. Star being guides, answer the call, time to shine. In Venusian, and we're talking about the planet of Venus, very much connected to the love frequency. So any of you being challenged with, gosh, I'm working with the embodying more love and that light and frequency and vibration of love, the Venus energy can totally help you with that. Um, okay, so again, you're not different than Venusians. It's a quality of energies. You can connect with Venusians for those of you that are open to connecting with galactic energies because we are too galactic. You're not separate. Same like the angelic realm. 
we are everything. It's all in the universe. The universe is in you just as much as I am in the universe, okay? And um, so take in that image, and it's a council, right? So it's light beings. Oftentimes we're working with light beings, and it's a group of energy versus just one singular person or like how we might depict it in our own human mind right and that's fine if it's more attainable for you to wrap your head around um but it, think of it it's a council okay think about maybe you have a group council maybe you used to go to drumming and that's could be considered a council in the circle right you okay um star being guides answer the call time to shine so some of you and i know for me where this is really really hitting me and partly because i'm going to start doing workshops and being more active in that because that to me is answering my own call so i can support people build their spiritual foundation um, in a more active way not just through pulling cards and sharing experiences and reminders um, because now is a time more than ever that we need to know how to be in our pillar of light, how to strengthen it, how to build our spiritual foundation, because you're waking up, your, your light body is expanding and more energy is coming into your physical body. Um, and with the support of your foundational tools, you'll be able to integrate it with more ease an expanded perspective of what your body's doing and then all, as well as begin to connect with your own I am presence this is why I'm doing the Akashic Record introduction it's for self-empowerment and healing because you have to begin to be your own you are your own healer no one heals you I do healing work I, I call it I'm a healing facilitator um, because I help you, I facilitate your own healing by holding the space and, and sh teaching you what I'm shown, teaching you the things that I've put into practice as well that I feel do stand, will stand for quite a long time as we're evolving and new, new approaches to our body and self-care are coming through, okay? Because you get to create it for yourself. You no longer have to... Um, there's no longer a medi mediary to connect to your higher guidance, okay, as we once used to seek out. So connect to the Venusians for counsel, for guidance, right? But you you still have the authority, right? You have choice, you have free will, um, but they can be highly supportive to connect to bringing in that golden light and answering that call and perhaps maybe bringing clarity to you for what that means to you as you're stepping into your path of light and answering that call of being a um, in service to the planet what does that mean what does that mean for you to be in service to the planet from a place of wisdom and higher guidance how are you answering that call and you sometimes you can ask for guidance it's reminding you to do it through love do it through light do it through the connection and it's time to put into action it's no longer time to just sit on the sideline well I think I should do this and that it's like no I have that deeper calling I'm gonna do it so hey council help me draw to me the other souls that are living on this planet that can assist me in succeeding what do I need to succeed to do my light work? What is, right? And literally say it to the universe. Okay, I need this, this, and this. If I'm surrendering, it's not even if, I'm not bargaining. I'm surrendering to this life work. Give me what I need to be successful at it, right? It could be people. It could be an education. It could be a mentor. It could be money. It could be a new place to live. It could be maybe I need a new car because mine's on the out. It could show up in various ways. Maybe I need a partner of some kind to help build a practice. I don't know, but you will know by connecting here, your higher self, and calling on spiritual guidance. Okay? I'm going to read the card on that for those of you that would like it. And... Um, and this is about, it's the path is clear for you. I'm being reminded of that as I'm like sitting here, Metatron's reminding the path is clear. 
as you step and take steps, the, the path is already cleared for you. And, and you can even call on Metatron to assist you because he governs the ascension process. And it's time for you to take the lead. It's time for you as you unveil all these old constructs, old restraints, old belief systems. Excuse me. You get to create what is actually, oh, makes more sense, right? Kind of like, oh, I'm going to grow food because that makes more sense for me right now. It doesn't mean I won't shop at grocery stores. It's just some other thing within me. It's like, hey, learn how to do this, right? Learn how to do this. Right, and it could look differently for you. Maybe you switch careers or maybe you take on a different role at your current work. Maybe you show up differently at your current work, right? Because it doesn't mean you have to quit, but maybe there's a different role for you there that's better suited for you that you've been wanting to do. And you have to put things into action. I'm being reminded of some friends from high school. They're like, oh, you got to make it happen. If that's what you want to do, you got to make it happen. Go make it happen for yourself. Don't sit on the sideline expecting someone else to just hand you something without you making any steps or effort toward it. It's time for you to be in action, okay? So Venusian Galactic Council, star being guides, answer the call, it's time to shine. The Venusians are advanced cosmic beings similar to angels who come from the planet Venus. They are our starry ancestors and are dedicated to helping us experience the embodied divine love. Okay? Love. They're embodying love. And we are learning to embody that. Okay? Some people may call it Christ consciousness and that, you know, it's an aspect, it's an aspect of also our qualities. Okay? I am presence, monad, okay? Embodied divine love. There are millions of them, and many of us will have them working with us as guides. If you feel drawn to this information or strongly connected to the stars of, or star people, there's, there's good chance that there are many extraterrestrial beings around you at this time, many of whom will be connected to the Venusian Galactic Council, governed by Lady Venus and Sunat Kumara. And Sanat Kumara, those of you that is Kumara, Kumara is, is a being that knows how to transmute energies into light. And one of the primary rays they work with is the violet flame ray. And I know for myself when I read, I came across a book recently um, about how Sanat Kumara became Sanat Kumara. And I just started crying because I realized, oh my God, that's what I've been doing. That's how I've learned to use it. It was one of the first rays I, I knowingly worked with. So I know for me, these aspects and tools are very much a part of my being and soul training that I've had in other lives to be here and learn to transmute energy. And it happened, the more you practice it, the quicker it gets and bring light to situations and transfigure. It's a very much of an alchemy tool. Okay, so connecting to Venus Gal Council, they can assist you in um, in mastering these the rays. Okay, particularly love ray and the um, violet flame ray that comes to mind right here with these. Um, those of you that are familiar with the Seven Sacred Flames book. Um, you may want to look that book up, even though the energy is um, the energies of our, our higher vibration now, the content will still activate something within you, okay? Or or you'll find something else that will come to your awareness that you're like, oh, there, that's what Gina was kind of referring to. That's what I felt light up for. And so some of you are going to light up for this. And I know in the class that I'm the introductory class it's just a two-hour workshop that's free just to give people a taste part of that is going over the the pillar of light and the violet flame it's, those are foundational tools um, because that's how important it is to work with the violet flame and it's the primary ray that we are that supports the ushering in of the golden age as well 
So if you're familiar with St. Germain, it, the, he very much governs that ray as well. So in any event, um, coming back to the Venusians, um, the, so governed by Lady Venus and Sanat Kamara, the Venusian Galactic Council is a divine board of directors who are responsible for recruiting light workers and leaders on Earth who have the potential to make huge difference by following the call of their soul. And I'm being reminded that I've actually created a workshop calling it becoming a Kamara and I just hadn't been ready to launch it. And to me, this is reminding me it's time to launch that course for people um, because you you on a deep level may be um, feeling that call and want to build your um, spiritual foundation in this way um, through light work and as an inner leader as self-empowerment your own leadership too and how a way shower okay um, Okay, so light workers and leaders on earth who have the potential to make a huge difference by following the call of their soul. When they come to us, it's an honor and opportunity to be reminded for a connection that has active that was active before we came into this incarnation. So like I said, when I came across the Kumara book, I realized, wow, okay, my soul, your soul too, you're no different than me, has been doing all this work before you even came into this incarnation to already come in with a certain level of attainment and mastery that already exists within you. So when you start working with these energies, it's gonna activate them more within you and then it'll just feel very natural, okay? It'll become natural. In the beginning, it'll be work because like anything to master, you have to practice, 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 and then you embody it, okay? Um, there's no set of, there's no set way of working with the Venusians, but they will contact us in dreams or meditation to share the information that will support us on a on our journey. They often send spiritual downloads in thought forms or understandings, dreams about flying or being in space or other ways in which they will come through to us. Connect on a bright starry night. Say Venusian Galactic Council. Thank you. For helping me answer the call of my soul so that's how you it's a suggested way to connect again to connect with them on a bright starry night say Venusian Galactic Council thank you for helping me answer the call of my soul and you'll just acknowledge their presence okay your message because they can't assist unless you begin to acknowledge and be open to the assistance okay and they're not above you they're just you're just they're going to assist you to become higher in your frequency and vibration okay um like anything we, we use the word hierarchy but it's not the best term okay you're no different than them you just have to remember how to hold the light okay in your body the message this is the call to action okay action i've been saying you got to be in action you are being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in the world you have a reason for being here and you have the potential to inspire support and heal your corner of the world <clears throat> don't let this information scare you or overwhelm you for you are being prepared energetically to step into this role the ideas you have been having recently and divine downloads, but you aren't being called to make the dramatic changes to your life, simply to move forward step by step. The Venusians Galactic Council will reveal more information to support you. Be aware of downloads of information and spiritual signs, for they are confirmation that you are on the right path. Okay, and so for that, spiritual signs, it could be all sorts of things, whether it's a dream, Pay attention to synchronicities in your life that are occurring like gosh I keep seeing this number three over and over or someone kept mentioning this workshop over and over should, is that something I should attend and your heart will tell you um, it, it'll it'll happen in synchronicities uh, pay attention to nature signs things like that um, and they'll just guide you. They're just going to guide you like breadcrumbs. And then you will go into your heart center, your higher self, and your inner knowing. Don't let your mental, logical mind get in the way because that's not how spirit works. It's a total different logic 
<laughs> it's a, it's a way in its own self, but it makes sense. Um, you, it's, it just becomes harder to articulate. So pay attention to the synchronicities and trust and just know that you are on your path of light. If you're listening to me here now and some of what I'm saying is resonating, um, and yeah, I'm being reminded again, uh, Metatron's just like the path is clear. Your path is clear and you're going to be guided back to it over and over again because there's no, no longer room to go outside of your path of light anymore. Once you've hit a certain level, you'll be quickly redirected back to it. And trust, again, it's coming into this place of trust that you're being divinely guided and that things that leave your life are meant to. It, that way it's going to make room for other things to enter in. So just like for my own example recently, things I was a part of, they've left my life. And I th thought, oh, God, that's be really great to be part of this. But they left. It left my life. And I'm just like, oh, okay, that's all right. It's making room for me to do my work, such as my workshops and other things that I know I want to bring forth and that I also didn't want to be under someone else's construct. I want to be able to create the way that I see the vision that's being shown to me and not from an ego place, but from a place of like where I can start to build my own foundation of the work that I've been called to do, that is deep within me to do. And that is that grounding foundational spiritual work. So people, as you connect higher, um, it become more ease and graceful for you. And, um, and I know that's one thing that people um, have commented about me they're like, wow, I've never seen something, someone do that before. And I asked, what is that? And they're like, well, I've never seen someone be so grounded yet so highly connected, right? And I forget how high I connect. And it's not coming from an ego place. It's just reminding you when you're fully grounded, it's coming in just as fast as I'm speaking to you right now. It's coming in through your thoughts. You are already connecting. I'm being reminded, you are already connecting. When you have inspiration, that's your connection to spirit. That's your connection to source. And then you go create it. So you don't have to effort, right? So it, like some of you might watch me and I just keep talking and talking and it sound, it, it's effortless because it is. And to recognize that it already is effortless for you. So stop trying to make it anything more than what it is. And it's a natural organic process that is already occurring within you through the form of thought and energy and inspiration and recognize like, oh, that's it. And then you go do it. It's like if you're working on a creative project and you're stuck on something and you're like, gosh, I got to take a break, go take a walk. You go, you give space to yourself and then the inspiration comes in, right? You stop thinking about it so that inspiration can come in. This is the same thing. St stop trying to force it don't overthink it just allow 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 take the steps be in action and then allow it to unfold free allow it to unfold like the lotus okay much love to all of you i hope this was really supportive to you today again i'm gina soul inspired reflections feel free to reach out if you want a private reading at gina it's Gina at soulinspiredreflections.com or um, Gina at, yeah, it's the email. Or go to my website at soulinspiredreflections.com and just email me through there or my Instagram at uh, soulinspiredreflections. Have a really blessed day. Those of you in the group here on Facebook, just you can always just direct message me. It's fine as well. Happy to support you. Again, please join the class on Sunday, the 30th. It's for two hours from 5 to 7 through Zoom. I will post an, uh, the link below again. And um, it's at no cost to you, but I do uh, suggest a donation if you'd like. You're welcome to donate. Um, but otherwise,